Hi there, it's Harry Kalimnios from thethoughtgym.com and in today's class it's all about ham and hips. So the hamstrings and the hip flexors, that's what we're going to be working to on today's short class. So let's start <clears throat> in Tadasana for now at the front of your mat. Closing your eyes, feet together, toes touching, heels slightly apart. All the toes, if you lift up all the toes from your feet and spread them down from the outside toe in as wide away as you can. Tuck the pelvis under slightly, allow the shoulder blades to draw down the back, palms facing forwards, relaxed by your, uh, by your thighs. Eyes closed, chin level, mouth closed, breath soft. Take a moment to centre yourself here. Sense the weight distribution in your feet. Maybe you're swaying slightly from side to side. Thinking about your practice today. Maybe dedicating it to someone or something else. And then slowly fluttering the eyes open. And then we're gonna start. So, inhale, reach the arms up nice and high. Exhale, as you soften the knees, keeping the back straight, swan dive in, down towards the ground. Inhale, halfway lift, hands come to your shins or thighs. Exhale, just fold down again. So soft legs here, soft knees. And gently, almost like you're bending one knee and then the other, almost like you're walking on the spot, but your feet stay grounded. And you're just gently working into the hamstrings here. So just... Bending one knee, then the other, maybe even tipping the hip a little bit as you do so. Good. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands come to your shins or your thighs, or even stay on the floor, but trying to keep the back straight. Exhale as you step the right leg back, long lunge. Release the right knee to the floor here. Left knee is over the left ankle. So from here, you're just going to be working into the front ankle. So mo mobilizing that front ankle by bringing the knee beyond the ankle here. Okay. If we want, we can come up a little bit, hands on the hips, draw back, draw forwards, draw back, draw forwards. Yeah, and then we'll take a position. Now, if your right knee is a little bit um, sensitive, put a, a towel or a pillow underneath, or maybe even fold the mat up in half like this and you can have a little bit more comfort. From here, bringing the arms up overhead and then creating goalposts with the hands here. As you activate the fingers, spread the hands, squeeze the shoulder blades together and draw the weight forwards into that front foot and you're opening up along the right side of the hip flexor here. Good. And inhale, coming back up. Now, for most of us, when we tend to come into this stretch, we like to go nice and forward like this and go, oh yeah, I'm really flexible. What I want you to do is tuck the pelvis under, so if there's a tendency for the, uh, the bottom to come out a little bit, is you tuck the bottom under, okay? So tuck the pelvis under, and then start to move forward into that stretch. Now, you should find that you find quite a deep stretch in that right hip flexor without moving even a, a, a third of the way from what you normally do. So if I release and come back, this is where I can go, okay? And it feels nice, I can feel a bit of a stretch there. Um, but in this situation, what I want you to do is tuck the pelvis under, and then you move forward in that way. And you'll find that you get the same stretch, but it's not as far, okay? It's gonna help you go further later, yeah, and then release, okay, and then just work that out, so work back in and out as you come forward and backwards here. From there, keeping the heel, the front heel where it is, we start to straighten that left leg, draw the hips back, activate that front foot, bring the foot towards the, the shin, keeping the hips over the knees or just behind the knee, and then bringing the chest down towards the front, okay? So 
before we hold this for long, we're going to just come back into our lunge and then back into the stretch here. Okay, so into that lunge and then we're going to hold. Now, back foot can be flat or it can be tucked, uh, whichever is your preference in this moment in time. Good. Yeah, and then coming back into that long lunge. From here, arms coming up over the head, taking the left hand down and reaching the right hand up and over and taking a slight side twist on the right side of your body here as you feel that going all the way into the hip flexor. If you're not feeling it so much, again, tuck the pelvis under so that it's not as far that you can go and then try it that way and see how that feels for you you may find that you find an even deeper stretch that way. Good. And then release. Framing the front foot, releasing the mat if you've got it. Stepping back into high plank. Lower the knees. Bring the chest between the hands. On the exhale, keeping the elbows over the wrists. Nice and slow brings you down. Inhale draws you forward into a baby cobra here. Drawing the shoulder blades down the back, drawing the chest towards the front, looking down. And then rolling back through to child's pose, tucking the toes, elevating into a nice bent leg down the dog. First time with dog of this class, so go easy, keep the knees nice and bent, hips nice and high, drawing the ears between the biceps here, pedaling the feet out, slight pigeon toe maybe in the feet. Feet are around hip width apart, just wider, and hands are out shoulder width apart. Take a nice static downward dog here, so stop bending into the knees, and breathe. Inhale, and exhale. Okay, elevating the right foot to the sky, three-legged dog, and then bending the knee and stacking the right hip over the left hip, taking our three-legged dog variation here. So. Right heel is coming down towards the left buttock. Both hands are pressing through equally if possible and you're stacking that right hip over the left. Good. And then coming back into three-legged dog and stepping the right leg all the way through into this long lunge. And just moving forward, backwards, forwards, backwards. Stepping the left leg through to meet the right. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold down. Bending the knees, softening the legs as you roll up vertebra by vertebra, arms come over her head. Exhale brings you into that swan dive with the bent legs all the way down towards the ground. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold, holding that forward fold. So shifting the weight maybe into the front of the feet, the toes, finding a little bit more stretch there into the hamstrings. Releasing, relaxing. Yeah, and then inhale, halfway lift, flat back, hands, shins or thighs. Exhale, you step the left leg back into this long lunge. Lower the left knee towards the ground, right knee is over right ankle. And again, maybe shifting the weight forwards and backwards a few times here. Forwards and backwards. Folding the mat or taking the pillow or towel underneath your left knee if you wish. And then maybe bringing the hands up to the hips and coming forward and backwards into that crescent lunge. From there, just sink into that front foot, drawing the hips forward, chest facing forwards. Hold in here for a few moments. Good. Then inhale, arms up. Exhale as you cactus the hands or create goalposts with the hands. Activate the fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades together, draw the shoulder blades down the back body. Left hip draws forward. Weight is shifting into that front foot. Good. And then we're gonna come back up to our neutral position. From here, tucking the pelvis under. So creating that pelvis tilt forwards. And then we're going to start to lean into that front leg a little bit, okay? So there we may fly that stretch along the left 
hip flexor in quite a lot of detail here. Good. Squeezing forward. I'm hearing creaking. I think it's the floorboard, unless it's my knee. <laughs> Which it could be either. I have no idea at the moment. Okay. Good. And then coming back. And then we're going to take the arms up, inhaling. Exhale, right hand down, left hand reaches up and over. First try it just without thinking about the pelvis too much. See what that does for you. And then come back up. Tuck the pelvis under. Draw the hands up, right hand down, left hand up, and then keeping that pelvis tucked as you find that left side body stretch, leaning over towards the right, but at the same time bringing the weight forwards as well, whilst keeping the pelvis tucked in. Good, 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 good. And then releasing, and we're going to take it back, drawing the right hip back, left, um, Knee stays where it is, the right ankle stays where it is, uh, the right heel stays where it is, the foot flexes towards you. Shift forwards and backwards a couple of times here as you find a little bit of mobility, drawing the weight forwards and back. And then when you're ready, hold in that position here. Right leg is straight, chest is drawing towards the thigh, foot is flexed towards you here. Good. Feeling a nice little stretch here. Good. Holding and then framing the front foot, stepping the right leg back. Again, lowering the knees towards the ground. Inhale here, shift the weight forwards. Exhale as you bring the elbows tucked in towards the ribs and hovering over the uh, over the wrists even. Inhale brings you into a baby cobra, maybe a slightly higher cobra here if you prefer. Tucking the chin, exhaling, rounding through the spine, coming momentarily through child's pose before coming into your downward facing dog. Again, pedaling through the downward dog, fingers nice and spread, pressure going through the backs of the knuckles here as you find a static downward dog. Drawing the ears in between the biceps, pelvis is being drawn up towards the back corner of the mat area. And then you inhale, left leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. From here, bending the knee, opening up the hips, so stacking the left hip over the right, doing your best to keep the hand distribution, weight distribution in the hands even, keeping the back ankle where it is, rooting down, opening up. Coming back into three-legged dog, inhale, exhale, draws you forward into that long lunge. Pressing forward and back a few times in your long lunge, long runner's lunge here. Inhale, brings your right foot to meet the left. Exhale, fold down. Bending the knees, rolling up vertebra by vertebra. Arms coming over the head. Inhale into a gentle back bend as you engage the glutes and the thighs here. Exhale, this time swan diving, maybe with straight legs as you float all the way down towards the ground. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back here. Exhale, stepping the right leg back, coming into a long lunge. Okay, so this time we're going to inhale, arms come up, keeping the right knee elevated. Okay, and then you can keep your hands on the hips for this or you can keep them uh, up into the sky. And then the motion is to draw the, the knee bent, keeping the left knee over the left ankle. And rather than the shifting forward and backwards a bit like this, it's almost like an elevator as we're going to come down, okay? So arms up if you fancy doing the arms up or keep them on the hips. And we're going to just come down, almost tap the floor, come back up. Tap the floor, come back up. But at the same time, we're tucking the pelvis under, we're keeping, uh, so we're not shifting the weight distribution too much. If you want, you can take the left hand down, the right hand up, and you can tap with the knee like this, whilst you are actually leaning over towards the left slightly as well. Good. And then from there, releasing the hands, and releasing the hands towards the floor, taking pyramid pose as we 
draw the right ankle back, the left foot up, left hip back towards us, straightening through that left leg and straightening through the right leg. So we create a nice little triangle with our legs here as we bring our chest down towards the thigh. And exhale. And then coming back into that long lunge, bending into the left knee, stepping the left foot back, taking high plank. Option is to come back onto the knees like before, or keeping that nice strong torso, keeping the elbows over the wrists, so shifting the weight forwards a little bit, keeping the elbows tucked in towards the ribs, lowering the shoulders towards elbow height, rolling over the feet, drawing up into upward facing dog, thighs engaged off the floor, glute engaged, Gaze forward, shoulder blades down the back. Exhale as you tuck the chin, push through the shoulder blades, roll up, and then stepping over the toes, finding your way downward facing dog. Inhale into three-legged dog with the right leg lifted here. Exhale as you bend the knee, open up the hip, and stack the right hip over the left, keeping the right ankle um, coming towards the left buttock, trying to keep the pressure through both hands equally, although typically you might find it more in your right hand than your left, or maybe you're slightly different. Inhale back into three-legged dog. Exhale as you step the right leg through, okay? Shifting forwards and backwards a few times here. And step the left leg through to meet the right. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins or thighs, flat back. Exhale as you fold back down. This time coming up with maybe straight legs and a straight back as you reverse swan dive all the way up to standing and then into your back bend, engaging the glutes and the thighs. Exhale, swan diving, straight legs, straight, arm, uh, straight back, all the way down towards the ground. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, thighs on the floor, flat back. Exhale as you step that left leg back, long lunge here. Okay, just shift the weight forwards and backwards a few times. And then inhale brings you up into crescent lunge. Again, hands can stay here or they can come to the hips. We're taking that elevator ride down to the floor, tapping the left knee down and coming back up. Okay, so we tap the left knee down and come back up without shifting the weight, keeping the pelvis tucked under like we did in the first exercise. Arms can be above, they can be below, or you can place the right hand down by your waist, left hand reaches up and over as you do these toe taps. I said toe taps, I mean knee taps. Okay, good. Coming back up, and then releasing both hands, either side of the front foot, releasing the back foot to the floor, elevating the toes of the front foot, drawing the right hip back, the left hip forward, straightening through that right leg, Exhale, breathe into the pose, okay? So your left ankle may be on the floor, it may not be on the floor. The foot will be both feet pointing towards the front of the mat really, but the right foot is elevated and the shin uh, is the destination for the toes. Good. Then coming back into your long lunge, stepping the right leg back, holding your plank position here, okay? It's a nice strong plank position. Now, most people when they come down through Chaturanga, they bring the elbows back like this. I want you to keep your elbows over your wrists, which means I need you to bring your weight forward and then lower down slowly, as slow as you can, down, 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 hover halfway and roll over the toes as you come into your upward dog or cobra here. Okay, so nice thighs engaged, Gaze forwards. Some people like to look up. Uh, I do sometimes, but generally I teach it facing forwards. And then tucking the chin, pushing through the, the back, rolling into downward facing dog here. From here, left leg inhales up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Bending the knee, stacking the left hip over the right as we find our downward dog variation here. Okay, so the right heel is coming down towards the floor, left knee is pointing up towards the ceiling, pressing through the backs of both hands here, stacking the left hip over the right, 
breathe in. And then coming back into three-legged dog, stepping that left leg through between the hands here, pressing off the back toe forward and backwards a few times here. Stepping the right leg all the way through, inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold down. And then reverse swan dive, straight leg, straight back, all the way up to our back bend here. Inhale, and then exhale, floating all the way back down towards the ground. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back, hands to shins or thigh. Exhale as you step the right leg back, followed by the left leg here. Option to come straight into downward dog. We'll take a, a, a chaturanga, coming down, inhale, coming up into your upward dog, and rolling back over the toes, downward facing dog. From here, inhale, right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, step the right leg outside of the right hand here. So we take a long lunge with the wide legs here. So right shin, right arm, one lined up to the other. Here it, you can stay. Okay, this is enough, this might be enough for you. If you want, you can release the left knee towards the ground. Again, you've always got the option of folding the mat as well if that feels good for you. From here, you can release the outer uh, forearm to the ground, which is the left forearm. And if that's fine, you can release the right forearm to the ground. So you can have both forearms on the ground. You can have the knee on the ground. Back toes tucked or untucked. Or if you tuck the toes, maybe you want to lift the back knee and you hold this lizard pose like this. Okay? So from here, you can maybe play around, shifting the weight forwards, turning the toes out slightly, maybe even reaching um, the hand to the knee. Good. And then from there, placing one hand down onto the floor, the other hand down onto the floor, you come back up to your starting position. And then you step back into your down facing dog. Just pedal the feet out. Inhale, left leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Stepping the left foot outside of the left hand. Again, lining up the, the shin and the forearm together. From here, staying here. Or folding the mat or folding uh, the pillow. And then maybe you stay here. Or you take the outer forearm down to the ground or you take the inner forearm down to the ground as well. Maybe you stay here, or maybe you lift that back heel. Now, if this is too far to go down, you can always place some books underneath the forearms, um, or any contraction that you have, that's gonna raise the floor for you a little bit. Different sides are gonna be different. I find it harder to bring the inside elbow down on this one, on my left side, than on my right side. So, just be mindful that each side will be different. Good. And then placing the hands on the ground, pushing back up into our starting position, and then stepping the left leg back into downward facing dog. Good. And then bending the knees, and then step in, or floating towards the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold down and soft knees as you roll up vertebra by vertebra. From here, turn on the side of your mat, step your foot to the back of the mat. So we've got <clears throat> our feet roughly underneath where our wrists would be when we open up our arms like this. And our feet are parallel with the sides of the mat or the room, whatever you're using. Slight, slight soft knees here. <clears throat> and then if we can, take our hands to our hips, that's an option, or you can take your hands out to aeroplane as well as you fold down. As you fold down with a straight back, try not to leave the hips coming back too far, but the hips stay in line with the ankles as you fold all the way down here. Now, if it's too strong on the knees or the backs of the hamstrings, just bend the knees slightly. Otherwise, keep them a little bit straighter, maybe bring in the index fingers or the peace fingers towards the toes or you put your hands on your hips, or maybe you put your hands holding onto your thigh, your calf, your ankle, the outside edge of the foot. Totally up to you. Inhale, have a halfway lift. Exhale, fold down. If you're gripping onto something, pull the elbows away from each other and to the corners of, well, away from the mat, basically. So, releasing that way. Good. 
and then inhale come back up to standing on your mat okay keep the legs wide we're going to come into a high skandhasana here so turn the right foot out left foot comes out a little bit and we're going to bend into that into that right leg if we bend into that right leg we lift the toes of the, the, the straight leg. Now, for some people, the heel will be raised, okay? Don't worry about that too much, or you can put a block under it, or a book. But coming down as far as is comfortable for you here, supporting yourself with the hands, either in front, and uh, maybe some of you might wanna put them in prayer. Um, it's up to you. If you're comfortable, you want a twist here, placing the right hand down onto the ground, and lifting the left hand up towards the sky, twisting the heart towards the sky. Good, and then from here, we're gonna place that hand back on the ground. We're gonna transfer the weight onto the left foot, keeping the hips nice and low as we come down onto Skandasana on the left side. So elevating the straight legs, toes towards the sky. Again, keeping the foot grounded if you can. It may be different on this side, it is for me, due to an injury. You can place the hand down onto the ground the right hand can go up towards the sky, you can take your twist here. Or you can have your hands into your prayer position, um, whatever is your choice here. Let's take it one more time on each side, so we're gonna transfer the weight slowly over towards the right, <coughs> sinking the hips a little bit lower. Maybe you feel a bit more comfortable this time and you can go a little bit lower, that's totally up to you. Whatever is your choice. And then shifting the weight back over to the left. Finding the stretch there. Hips, ham and hips, I've called this class. Hamstrings and hips, it's, <coughs> it's doing all of that for me. From here, we're gonna turn, bring the feet in slightly, turn the toes out, so, and come into a goddess pose in our squat position. So the knees are tracking over the second toe if you can, opening up nice and wide. Thighs are parallel here. Hands can be open, taking a mudra if you wish, or they can be by the hips. And then from there, slowly straightening the legs, pushing up to standing. Step towards the front of your mat. Big toes touching, heels slightly apart. Inhale, arms up towards the sky. Exhale as you fold all the way down towards the ground. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Step the left leg back, step the right leg back, high plank. Either come to the knees or taking your chaturanga, bringing the shoulders down to elbow height. Inhale, upward dog or cobra, and rolling back, finding your downward facing dog. From there, just walking the feet inch by inch inch by inch, inch by inch, towards the front of your mat. Again, feet can be apart or together. And we're gonna just take a ragdoll pose here. So we're gonna take our hands onto our opposite elbows, swing from side to side for a couple of breaths. And then we're gonna release the hands to the ground. And we're gonna see if we can get the stretch coming from the hamstrings rather than the lower back. So we're going to shift the weight forward slightly, see if that feels different in the hamstrings. Holding it here. And from here, we're going to just bend the knees and make our way to sitting and then eventually coming down to our Shavasana. So lying on the floor, feet come to the corners of the mat, toes flop open, arms nice and long, palms facing the sky, neck nice and long, gaze is softened, eyes are closed. Breathing, relaxing. Releasing any tension. On the inhale, imagine you're saying the word re. On the exhale, imagine you're saying the word release. Inhale, re. Exhale, release. Inhale, re. Exhale, release.
take some deeper breaths into the belly, moving in the fingers, moving in the toes, rotating through the wrists and the ankles, one way and then taking it the other way. Taking your hands over your head to the floor behind you, stretching from your fingertips to your toes, stretching the left side of your body out, stretching the right side of your body out, bringing your knees in towards your chest, keeping your eyes closed and your attention inwards, focus towards the space in the centre of your forehead, just above your eyebrows there. Squeezing yourself tightly, telling yourself something nice about yourself, even if it's you've just given your first ever yoga class a go. And keeping your attention inwards, your eyes closed and attention focused on that centre point in your forehead. Rolling over to your left to your right in the fetal position. Maybe making a pillow with the hands before gently pushing yourself up to sitting on your mat or your cushion. Cross-legged or sitting on your knees or sitting in any which way works for you. Keeping your attention inwards. Bringing your prayer towards your heart centre. Perhaps offering this class up to someone that needs it. Or maybe something that needs it. Raising your prayer towards your third eye, your forehead. We ask that we have the wisdom to watch our thoughts. Lowering our prayer towards our mouth or our throat chakra. We ask that we have the restraint to watch our words especially when dealing with other people, but also to be mindful of our own internal dialogue. And then finally, laying our hands towards our heart centre. We ask that we have the strength and courage to do whatever is right and necessary, even when it's not the most preferred or desired path. Namaste. Thank you so much for practising with me today. Um, my name is Harry Kalimnios. You can find me on all social media channels as The Thought Gym on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. I release many, many videos on YouTube around mindset, health, resilience, well-being, uh, yoga and general personal development. So please do check that out and come to thethoughtgym.com where you can find a free energy assessment and you can determine what you need to do to find that little bit more oomph in your life. So I do hope to see you in one of those places very soon and until I see you on the mat either live, in person or on uh, an online version, I wish you a pleasant day, week, month, year, lifetime and namaste.